Well, hi everyone. Welcome to a video where I'm going to be talking about this thing over here. It's the MIDI Router Control Center by Conductive Labs, and it's a pretty cool little device. So stick around, uh, grab a coffee or whatever, and uh, let's check it out. All right. So what is the MIDI Routing Control Center, or MRCC for short? Let's go have a little bit of a closer look at it and uh, I'll tell you a couple of things about it. It's a MIDI routing device that lets you route your MIDI controllers to your synths with a simple touch of the button and without the need to connect to a PC. It has lots of connectivity including support for USB, MIDI DIN and TRS. Plus it also has a USB class compliant connection. It also offers a wealth of routing configurations, layering and MIDI deep control through the OLED display menu system. And it also has a built-in MIDI clock that can be used to sync a CV gate. So you can put this thing into your modular. All right, let's have a little overview of what the panel is and the functions. There is an option to obviously rack mount this. As you can see, I've got it in my rack here, um, but there's also a desktop option, um, and you can see in these photos how they look on your desktop. That's very, very handy. I'll show you the uh, more details about the rack mount kit and the desktop kit modules a bit later in the video. It also has 11 inputs and 17 outputs, and this is based on the MIDI DIN and USB connectivity. They're physical ports. So that's 11 in and then 17 out physically. And then on top of that, it has 39 in and 34 out in total. The front panel buttons has per routing, per port. There's no need to go and access a PC or an app to do this. You can use all the buttons across the bottom to set your routes up. It has a virtual cable on the USB host, which is four of those, so that each input has four virtual and it also has 12 in and 12 out on the PC connection. It's USB class compliant. It has auto port splitting and merging based on routes, an OLED display for MIDI messages and monitoring, and I'll go into that a little bit later. And obviously it has much, much more things like port and or routing filters. It has routing modifiers like channel, velocity, CC, keyboard range, random and transpose. It has an inbuilt master clock, as I mentioned before. It has an arpeggiator, and it also has the ability to set presets, routing presets. There's 128 in here. So you can save up your, your settings and give it a nice friendly name. Okay, on to the routing example. So what I've got here is an Archeria key step, and that is actually connected into the MRCC via that orange USB cable, which you can see there. And I've also got the MIDI DIN number one connected to the Behringer 2600. And I've got the MIDI DIN in number two connected to the Novation Peak. Obviously we've got a hell of a lot of other stuff here we can connect up to, but this is just a really basic routing example. What we're gonna do first is I'm going to turn off the MRCC, turn it on and show you that nothing works. That's off. Let's turn it on. Wait for it to fully load. And nothing working, okay? The reason for that is because we haven't saved any presets on this. This is just acting as a dummy route. So let's get into the setup and I'll show you how we do our first basic route. What we wanna do is we wanna route the input of the Archeria key step, which I said before is this one, the orange cable. So that's coming in on, you can just follow the line. It's coming in on B. You can see the light is on, which means it's got connectivity. And there's our B input and output controls. And these are our two outputs that I mentioned before via MIDI DIN. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna go input and then output. So now you can see the two lit up and let's give it a whirl. So 
just to show you that's working. All right, beautiful. So that's our first route that we're gonna do. But I also want to control the Novation Peak, which is number two. There's the Novation Peak running beautifully. Now I can switch between the two using my key, chip, key step just by changing MIDI channel. So MIDI channel seven is the ARP. And we change channels. Back to 14. And that's how you do a MIDI route. But what's also interesting is this. On the OLED display, we've got a bit of information. What I want to do is show, is show you basically what that looks like from a... So this is a part of the manual that we uh, have got some draft format at the moment, but this, this is actually good enough for you. So you can see these little sections, these blocks, there's three of them going rows across, right? The first row is the five pin in, the second row is the five pin in four, and the last row is the, sorry, the, the last block row is the USB host in, and the bottom line is a USB device in. So if you look at this, you can see the key step is indicated by a little triangle. And you can see those two little, these two little squares here, they are actually showing that MIDI output one and two, because you've got from one to the end here, you can see which are connected. Very, very intuitive. Anyway, that's a real basic overview of the activity screen. There's much, much more to show you in this, but I just thought that would be a good opportunity to, to show you the basic stuff. All right, so another interesting thing to check out about the MRCC is how it actually displays in things like MPCs. This is an MPC Live. This is Live, you know, the first model, MPC Live 1. And you can see in here, the MRCC is showing all the available MIDI, I think this is MIDI inputs. Okay, so from 1 to 12. And this is also showing all the available MIDI outputs as well. So that means that you can actually, you know, manipulate MIDI tracks in your MPC directly into the MRCC. And the only connection that I've got on the MRCC is in the back here where I've got the USB. So it's literally just plugged straight in via the USB device, which is this connection here. So that's pretty cool. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna do a setup on the key step as you guys know, the key step is pretty basic when it comes to things like being able to play across the octaves. You can't do any sort of fancy things like layering and splitting on it. But with the MRCC, you can. So let's do a really, really basic uh, keyboard split. And what we're going to do is we're going to split one half of the keyboard to send to the Behringer 2600. And we're going to split the other half of the keyboard. And it's going to go to the Novation Peak. We're going to set this key step up so that we can layer the keyboard. And we're gonna do, one half of the keyboard is gonna be the ARP 2600, which at the moment is coming through on MIDI channel seven. And the other half of the keyboard we're gonna do on channel 14, which is just above it, is the Novation Peak. But I don't wanna to have to keep changing MIDI channels, I just wanna kind of play a bass line down here. And a Kind of thing there. All right, so it's all done through the, the menu here and it's really simple. So this is our MIDI routing. We've got B, right? And what are we gonna do in here is we're going to scroll down and give this a modifier. And we're gonna make this layer one, okay? And then we're going to make B 
2. All right, so B2 is layer 2. The reason why we want B1 and B2 and layer 1 and layer 2, you'll see in just a sec. So the next thing we need to do is go out this channel layers section on the mods section here. So you can see this is kind of like the mod section and this is kind of like the, the fourth page or page four. All right, so channel layers. So where we go in channel layers, we are on number one, so layer one. And down here, we're gonna make media channel, the lower note, we're gonna make it C1, okay? And the higher note, we're gonna make this, I think it's C4, okay? So that's MIDI channel layers one, done. And then MIDI layer two, we make that C4 to C8 there. Now, um, so far nothing's happening and I'll tell you why, because we need to go, now in this case, the source channel we're going to make MIDI channel one and the destination channel, we're going to make MIDI channel seven. All right. And in the second layer, we're going to make the source channel one and the destination channel 14. Let's go to the key step view. So you can see me playing it here, and you can see. One thing that you need to do though on this is there's a merge or blend section here, and that's a, the amount of notes that it will blend between the two layers. So I, I actually just want it to be clean. I want it to be blending nothing on both. So I want it to literally be hard. I want this one here to be there and no blend. So when we go back to having a look overhead, we should get to here. So you can see there's no blend. But if I do blend this, let's blend it one note. two notes, so you can see now how it's sharing both. So that's how blend works, so that's pretty interesting. So let's go back to here. There you go. That's how you do layering on a key step without actually having the feature in, all thanks to the MRCC. All right, so let's talk about uh, Korg Volkers for a sec. And I think this is a good one, actually. When you've got a Korg Volker, like a Volker FM, it's got an inbuilt sequencer. Uh, and also you can actually play, play MIDI notes on it as well through a MIDI. But the problem with these is when you press uh, play on another MIDI device like a sequencer like this one, like the, the MPC Live, it automatically starts when I press play on here. It's sequencing it from here, but it's also sequencing it on here. Watch when I press play. So you can see Can see that light going on there. I don't want this to start here. I don't like the sequencer on here at the moment. I want this sequencer to control it because I've got more control, I've got more ability. Right, so what do we do is we go into the filters section on the MRCC and because it's coming out of the PC we want to set it to this S stop thing. Now when I go to press play on my MPC,
it is only playing the sequence that's on there. And if you look at the Volker, I'll press play again. You can see that's not lighting up. If we go back to the MRCC, whoops, sorry. And I turn that stop feature filter off and I press play on the MPC. So that's a really, really, really cool feature. Really, really cool feature. And uh, I reckon a lot of Volker owners will love that about the MIDI routing um, and the filters on the MPC.